Snow's ass and bathing her little butt. She pissing in cups and shitting on the floor now and people walking in that shit and picking up cups that got pissed in it and I'm quite frankly I'm just fed up with it. I'm Thank you so much for watching St. Julie TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything, I mean the continuation of my mommy issues series. I don't know, I, I don't really have a title for this particular series other than the fact that it's about my mom. Before I get into the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss the next videos. You don't want to miss what is going to be happening. Like This video is going to be like kind of like bitch what the fuck as you can see by the title but like bitch it gets worse so like just keep up with my you know just keep up with my bullshit or whatever keep up with my drama so y'all we left off in the last story time and by the way if you haven't figured it out already this series that i'm doing isn't like a one story time thing like if you're new to my channel and you're just coming and watch this video you may think it's like the very first time I'm talking about this but it's not bitch like no it's not so I'm gonna need for you to go to my very first story time which is called my mom left my dad for another woman yeah something like that I'll post the thumbnail whatever up here but um I think I'm gonna probably start like numbering them or whatever that way you can kind of know um, I'll probably do that with my ghost series as well. So if you notice some numbers in my videos, then yeah, that's because they're now in order. And um, I want to, I think that's going to be like a lot better to help people, um, you know, figure out what story goes to what and after who, you know, all that good shit. So y'all, last story time, um, we left off by talking about how my mom, um, like left. Like the, the very first time she like showed, showed like, crazy weird behavior um the very first time she like exploded up exploded on everybody the very first time she just like like left like like i don't know like her, her who she was who she used to be like she was no longer and um we're still in 2014 you know 2014 we're still in 2014 right now y'all and so leaving off and my previous story time after my mom had her whole little episode or whatever in the parking lot of incredible pizza with me my daughter um and my grandma you know i had a birthday party there and da 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 you know i discussed it in my last story time so after she had this whole you know whatever um i left i went home freddie picked me up i went home and um i had got a phone call from my grandma and so my grandma was you know it's like yeah, your mom was drinking before she left, and she left, and no one knows where the fuck she is, and so, um, kind of worried, kind of concerned, because her, her phone is going straight to voicemail, and no one knows how to fucking reach her, so. Um, I was, was honestly, in the beginning, I really wasn't that worried, simply because, I mean, my mom, she's a, she's a grown woman, so I, I'm pretty sure, well, I, at least I thought she would be capable of making, um, rational decisions. But clearly, as you guys can see over the course of these story times, she, at this point, I don't know, I can't tell you one rational decision that she has made, honestly. So, um, but you know, still me, 2014, after this happened, I'm still thinking that, okay, like, you know, she's just going through it. Maybe she's going through a midlife fucking crisis or some shit. Like, maybe she's getting older, you know. <laughs> like, at this time, she was still in her late 30s, so, um, she was that old. Well, she's still not old, but bitch, like, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Like, she wasn't at an age to where, like, you can have, like, a midlife crisis. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can have a midlife crisis any point in your life, but, like, y'all know what I mean? Like, at the age she was, she was kind of, like, just now building for her future, you know what I'm saying? But she like screwed all that up by quitting her job for no fucking reason. So a few days after that phone call that I had with me and my grandma of her telling me that she didn't know where my mom was, a couple days went by. So my grandma, she she calls me. And like the thing about my grandma, like I can tell whenever something's wrong with her. So she has like this certain tone in her voice. And so um, she called me and she was like, um, I got a disturbing text message from your mom. You know, she was basically going back and forth um, with them um, in a group message. And whenever I said them, I mean her my, and my aunt. And my mom was just going off saying all type of shit. Um, I'll post this one part. I'm going to post. Uh, I'll post it right here. That's kind of another reason why I'm to the side for this video. Um, but this one right here, um, 
and mind y'all let me just let y'all know the reason why i even have all of these screenshots in the first place um because i know y'all probably like why the fuck you have all of this proof and shit like my mom wants to meet everything everything and so at this point me and my mom wasn't speaking yet but it got to the point where we were speaking and she was like kind of like telling me about the situation like recapping it to me as i'm recapping it to y'all but um in an email form and so she emailed me the screenshots of her in the message and so that's how i know what the message says exactly and that's how i have the screenshots so this one post picture screenshot i'm just gonna show you show you right here this is where she was like um fuck you and blank i can't say that i can't say that name because it's my grandma's name but she said fuck you and blank um see how y'all gonna pay that fucking rent and by the way this video contains a lot of motherfucking proof bitch like a lot of actual proof police reports hunty like all of the tea y'all know i'm not just gonna come over here with a story time like with no proof no receipts no reports like i'm not just i don't be talking for no reason like i i'm pretty sure if you've been riding with me for so long you know you know angie don't just be talking and you know doing little story times or whatever here and there without no motherfucking proof so the proof is in the pudding that's why we have this nice little whatever the fuck the color is gonna be whenever i edit this shit motherfucker like a nice as of right now it's a nice little green screen but um in actuality it's a nice little box nice little nice little space because that's where i'm gonna have the proof so Pay attention. Uh, I'm going to read as I'm reading the proof. And I know y'all like, what the fuck she mean? Proof, 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 what? Show me the proof. I'm getting ready to get into it, but I'm just kind of warning y'all before. I'm going to read along. So, um, no need to like pause the video to read the email unless you want to. But I'm going to read it as I have it right here. That way y'all can just follow along. So, pay attention. Don't be... Don't, look Don't be doing no extra shit, my nigga. Because you got you to gotta read along right now, okay? So, um, back to my grandma. After my grandma told me the nasty message, which is what I just briefly told y'all, like I said, I'm gonna get into the actual de detail of the message in a little bit. But she was just basically telling me that her and my mom and my aunt, they were going back and forth with her in a group message because my mom told, because, you know, my mom left. My mom picked up and left her house. Mind y'all, they all lived together, but that was my mom's house. Her name was on the lease, well, apartment. Her name was on the lease. It was her shit like all of the bills were in her name they were just like supposedly like pitching in with each other to make ends meet like a fucking family you know my mom left and uh they hadn't seen her since the party so since you know my grandma told me she had she was drinking or whatever and then she had left and it was kind of like concerned my grandma was like you know your mama just up and left the apartment you know rent about to be due because i think rent yeah rent actually was due because my daughter's birthday is january 8th so i assume they were already late on the rent because like uh they they had to move out really really quickly let's just say that so yeah they definitely did, hadn't paid january's rent yet um but my grandma was kind of like you know stressed out about it because where those apartments was like fucking high like um they were like 14 maybe no i'm not even gonna give it that like 1300 or something um which you know is kind of high for some people and so for their situation that was fucking high for my grandma to just you know start paying going from pay i don't know how much they were paying a piece maybe like four or five hundred dollars a piece going from paying that to a whole you know the whole entire rent and that's just that wasn't in her budget and so um it was important for her to move and so she was really really freaking stressed out about that because you know she just made it to houston she hadn't even been in houston for a whole year y'all it hadn't been, even been a year yet and you know this is just this hiring situation was just you know i don't fucking know like it just got out of control out of nowhere and so um the the, the main purpose for my grandma and my aunt and my grandfather moving in with my mom so that they can help each other because as y'all know my mom was in a lot of debt like a motherfucker was getting my check or whatever but she still was in debt which is still kind of like how but you know we know anyways so after the conversation or whatever, I I got off the phone with my grandma and um, a couple days later, I, you know, I still at this point hadn't heard from my mama or anything like that. So a couple days later, um, I'm an emailing ass bitch. Like a bitch always checking her email multiple times a day. Like that's just me. So a bitch, like if you ever need, if it's ever an emergency bitch and you need to email me like, expect for me <laughs> to respond because like that's just who i am so 
I was checking my email or whatever and um I saw I had an email from my mom <laughs> and I'll go ahead and put it up here uh, I'm gonna obviously block out the name and the uh, email address all right so follow along with me um, I'm putting it right there so hopefully it's I have it big enough to where you can see um, but this is the email as I read um, she titled it birthday gifts for my vet. I remember if y'all an, another tester if y'all remember I told y'all my mama used to always call my daughter my veil like oh that's my veil what my veil doing and it's because my daughter's name is Nevea and, and she called you right see I don't be lying like I don't be motherfucking lying you see that you know so she titled it birthday gifts for my veil and also if y'all can look at the um if y'all can obviously see from the date she emailed this um de December January 16th that's 2014 so I'll be lying girl anyways the email reads good morning Adoria I'm communi I'm communicating with you via email because I think it is the best way to reach out to you at this time or best way to reach you at this time I have bought lots of gifts for my sweet baby girl's birthday and I will leave them at the apartment I also purchased diapers and wipes for her so you wouldn't have to worry about that either for a while so please be sure to stop by the apartment as soon as you can so that you can get her the gifts I placed her shot records and Medicaid card in the Converse shoe box so please put them somewhere safe y'all following along all right and also it reads <laughs> I write this email with mixed emotions, mainly because I never thought in a million years my daughter would go against me and team up with my ignorant sister and clueless mother. By the way, y'all, this is gonna be my first time actually reading this. Like, honestly, y'all, and hold on, before I get into, further into the email, I didn't even realize I had these emails until like literally a couple of days ago because I was just going through my emails searching for the police report well, y'all understand why I said the police report later down the line in the story, but I was searching for the motherfucking police report, and then I see all of these other emails, and I'm like, wait, fuck, she did email me, like, after she left, and I had read the email, I'm like, wow, like, that shit is so fucking crazy, like, I never in a million years thought I would, like, be recapping the story, like, revisiting the situation, like, ever whatsoever, and it's crazy that I have everything in my email like a bitch gonna delete shit like as y'all know like this is my don't delete ass shit phone like <laughs> I got my regular phone and my don't deleting ass shit phone right here and I ain't deleting shit so mm -hmm. everyone take me to court mm -hmm. so I write this email with mixed emotions mainly because I never thought in a million years my daughter would go against me and team up with my ignorant sister and clueless mother peep the manipulation and peep the just peep all the toxic things that are going on in this email. However, I do know that you are young and don't know what you've really done. And maybe you do and you just don't care. Whatever the case, this whole situation has allowed me to see who my family really is. I'm sure blank, which I have to mark out because that's my aunt. I'm sure your aunt has already told you, but the way things are right now, all of you are dead to me. She said all of you, including me. Um... As of right now, I don't have a mother, sister, or daughter. It's sad to say, but that's my reality at this point. Mom doesn't know what she has done, or if she does, she doesn't give a damn. She has bullied me my entire life, and that has come to a halt. She has allowed blank, which is my grandfather, she meant to say. She has allowed your grandfather to mistreat me the whole time I lived with them. She even looked the other way when I expressed to her the inappropriate behavior that happened between us. She did confront him. Of, okay, so this is going into, and I'm not going to really get into this really right right now because this is going to come up later on. But um, this is the first time that I, I, like at this point in my life, this is would have been the first time I've ever heard of my mom being touched by my grandfather. And um... I'm not gonna say that she's lying. I'm not gonna say that it's true because I wasn't there. I wasn't even thought of. I wasn't even, I was only an ovary at this point. Um, but apparently, you know, she had some things in her childhood. Well, this only thing rather in her childhood that she felt like, you know, my grandma didn't pay attention to or whatever. And you know, that that's something that they have to deal with. Like that ain't got nothing to do with me and her relationship. Like. 
why, why, what the fuck, like, I'm your daughter, like, I'm, they ain't got nothing to do with me, I mean, like, I feel for you, I feel for her, you know, especially if that is true, but she, like, shoved it in my face so much, so it was, like, if I felt like I was responsible for what happened to her, and it's, like, that's not fair to me as a daughter, you know, but anyway, that's why I'm skipping over this part, because it's just a lot of foolishness that I don't want to even talk about, I could swear you and I were talking about her, and whenever she said her, she's talking about my grandma, hollering at blank my little cousin and something else that she did on saturday now if y'all watched the last story time she's talking about this is about the time when she you know completely blew up my little cousin did something i don't remember what he did but it ticked my grandma off and it caused her to discipline him like she fussed at him a little bit and disciplined him as a grandma would and so earlier that day, my, my mom had also been talking about, talking to me about the way that my grandma had been disciplining him as well. Mind y'all, my grandma didn't whoop him or anything like that. She just would raise her voice at times where she felt it was necessary. And so earlier that day, whenever we were getting ready for the party, my mom had expressed to me like, why is she always fussing at him or whatever? Like, what's wrong with her? Like, I don't know, she just found it a, a really, really big issue. And honestly, I didn't find it an issue really because if i did then you know i would be like okay i kind of understand but like he was just tripping or whatever like you know he was just being being a little boy and i don't know how old he was at the time but he was just being a little boy and so my mom brought it up to me and i was just like mm -hmm, yeah you know you, you know how whenever somebody say something and it's like you don't want to really want to say nah i don't really think that because you don't want to hit their mouth or you don't want to go back and forth with them that's how it was so when, whenever my mom brought it up like why is she fussing at him or whatever or whatever she said i was just like i don't know mm -hmm. i wasn't like saying oh yeah you know my grandma shouldn't have been fussing at him i was just like yeah you're right she is fussing at him but I guess she took that as like I was on her side, but I was really just agreeing. Like, yeah, he, she's fussing at him, but it was really more of a like, mm-hmm, yeah, she is. But okay, and so what type of thing? But um, anyways, for you to take her side saying she didn't say anything during that heated argument hurt me to the core. It also brought back bad memories of when you went to Lafayette after telling me you were pregnant and demanding that I make blank rough rider leave it reminded me of how disrespectful you were to me on several occasions both via phone and email so this is why i lost it that day pause bitch motherfucking pause i really wish i had access to my old ass email account it was an and i can tell y'all my email it was adoria 1995 i believe um or, or doria forever something some shit like it one of the two I probably had two email addresses, but I no longer have access to it. No. Or was it Miss Dory? Maybe it was Miss Dory. I had two or three other emails that I no longer have access to. But one of those emails or the email that I had used to email my mom. Again, we're going back. If you haven't been keeping up, then you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I sent my mom an email and I told her how I felt about the situation. And she completely fucking ignored it. But she took that because I, I did also in that email ask her, like, are you gay? Like, you like women now? Like, let me know because the relationship that you have with Rough Rider is like, it don't seem fucking normal. You know, like if y'all supposed to be best friends, it's not normal. But um, for years, she took it as disrespect. Like if it ever would come up, like, well, from, it, she, it didn't really start coming up until now, but every time it would come up after this point, she would always say, oh, you disrespecting me. You, you know, wanted Rough Rider out the house and this and that. You made me put her out. Like, she would always throw that in my face. So, that's another thing to keep in mind as I'm reading this email to y'all. All right, after she says, so, this is why I lost it that day. Mind y'all, she pretty much blamed me as the reason why she lost it that day. But anyways um but i am grateful that all of this happened you know you want to know why well i got my life back before this happened i was a miserable individual in my own house and while we are on my own house subject i don't know what your grandma has told you but she did not help me get that apartment the only thing she helped me with is 82 dollar deposit and something else minor lol i guess her i guess in her mind she did help me poor thing and as for your aunt's behavior, I will send you screenshots of our conversation that took me over the edge with her. She is very ignorant, clueless, dope head, and all that matters it, to her is having a good time. Um, and then that's whenever she started talking about her son. I'm not going to speak on her son because that ain't got nothing to do with the story. Um, 
but she says i was taking up i was taking up for her son and this is why your grandma got pissed off with me your grandma feels i shouldn't tell her anything because she's my mother well it doesn't work like that i have to tell her about herself even earlier that morning because she hollered at the kids because she didn't want them to start pulling out their toys at 10 o'clock in the freaking morning i said ma what do you want them to do sit there at the bed table and look out the window i will pick up the toys let them kids be kids so this is why she was pissed off at me so she thought uh prior and i didn't mention this before because i totally forgot about this but prior to my grandma um you know in the whole party prior to that they were already kind of like had some like kind of tension between each other prior to going to the party so that was another reason why she kind of like went off the cliff so easily i said moving with my mother was the worst mistake oh my god i have a street right next to me and people it's like a uh like not so busy street and people take advantage of it and like speed down the way and so if y'all hear cars that's what that is um anyways i said moving with my mother was the worst mistake i could have ever made i was with my grandmother simply because she had a dope head husband that beat her every day she was also she also smoked weed in front of me so i was better off by my grandma's anyways anyway my aunt didn't know the details of what happened only that we got into an argument and that she feels she's losing her grip you think rolling on the f fucking floor laughing i guess that's what that means your grandma didn't tell her everything, so I decided to fill her in. This is what your grandma does whenever she gets ready. She calls my aunt and uncle and talks about me to them and talk about you to them as well. This is what she thrives on, so I did the same thing. And I added the story about your grandfather molesting me. Molesting me. So your grandma just don't know what she's done, but she will learn today. Y'all see how, like, y'all see the arrogance in this email? Like, just reading, reading it? Like, do y'all see that shit? Um, then this is when she says, I'm moving back to Louisiana, not New Orleans, but maybe Gonzales, St. Rose, or some other small city outside of New Orleans. I am getting away as, I, I am getting as far away from them as possible, as soon as possible. I pray that you will come to your senses one day because I miss you and Nevaeh dearly. I had a horrible dream that her father hit her in her face and it was swollen so bad that I had to rush her to the ER. I woke up hysterical, crying uncontrollably. I love her like my own child and it hurts me so bad that you would keep her from me because of all of this. But I will continue to pray for you and Nevaeh and I believe that you will one day come to your senses. This is another thing that like just me reading back at it's like she she made me feel and I don't feel like this anymore but at the time of me reading this she made me feel like everything was my fucking fault pretty much because she kept saying when you come to your senses when you did that you this you that like she hadn't at never at one point took responsibility for any of her actions whatsoever and it's like that was that is so fucking toxic like for a mother like a fucking mother like you my i came out of your motherfucking vagina my nigga like you really sit here and portray to be the victim when really you're the bad guy like sis let's be clear yeah and then she said some other stuff about some other stuff that don't really don't matter but that's what she said so real quick let me get to the uh some of the strange okay so i don't see everything that my mom told my aunt but these are my aunt's screenshots basically she was like talking really really bad about her son like basically making it seem like he was he was like special or something and um it was like really really disrespectful and so my aunt defended herself as she should and so um i don't think i'm gonna read this it's not really it don't really make a difference but basically well no it does yeah because she she kind of read her okay so my mom <laughs> My mom told me she was going to send me the screenshots, right? And so I told my aunt, I was like, yeah, my mom said she was going to send me the screenshots after she had emailed me. And so this is what my aunt said, and this is starting. She said, you told Dory you're going to screenshot her, our text. Well, I'm sending the screenshot of you disrespecting me and my mom first. Because obviously you forgot I'm actually holding back. Because if, because if it was a whole off the street or somebody that's not my blood talk about my child like that, I would be in jail. I never did you anything and even offered to split this $3,000 loan that I initially thought was a thousand. So remember the story time? I think I told y'all it was fifteen hundred or a thousand. I don't be lying. In these screenshots, she's talking about that exact loan that I was telling y'all my mama had got for them to quote unquote move that title loan she got for them to move. But instead of her 
you know, doing what she has to do with it. She got more back and then didn't tell anybody about it. And then whenever she brings it up, she throws it in their face and tell them to pay the loan that the extra loan that she didn't tell nobody about. So that I just mentioned that to say like my mom had like really, really she made really, really poor financial decisions. Like she didn't give a damn, like a fuck at all. So my grand I mean my, my aunt was just reading her for her shit in this message and so um she says if you would have talked to me about going back to get more money, I would have told you not to. We also know there's a long list of fuck ups you made in your life, but me being the bigger person, I'm not going to bring those things up. For example, sleeping with a married man. Something I would never do. I don't need to insult your character to make me feel better. Even after you insulted me on Facebook, because my mama was going in on Facebook on everybody. She was like, even me, like even me, y'all. She was going in on everybody. And you know, remember the sleeping man situation? She was, she slept with a married man. And then the, the other story time, I don't be lying, bitch. But that was really the main part I wanted to read. I got this this long ass email, as you can see. All of these fucking screenshots. And so just like y'all are trying to like, you know, cope with everything and trying to take everything in, what I just fucking said, that's exactly how it was five years ago. Like, that's exactly how I felt. Cause I'm like, oh my God, it's so much fucking information. When did this happen? How did this happen so quick? Like, what the fuck is going on? So after all of that bullshit my mama told me about, I mean, me and my grandma ganging up on her and, and stuff like that, I, in response, said, I really appreciate the gifts. I'll be going by there soon to get them along with the rest of her stuff. I don't have much time to write everything I want to right now because Vea is all over the place right now. I'm talking about my daughter. Um, but there's a lot of misunderstanding according to what I just read. But just know that no one is poisoning my mind, neither did they ever. Everything was told to you years ago by me, and now it's all due to my feelings. Neither was I ever on anyone's side. You're just not opening up to me, and I now clearly understand your actions. Although it doesn't make some of the things that happen okay, but I do understand. Soon I'll be getting in contact with you and get in detail about whatever I feel when I come back and she emailed me back talking about uh, my sister sent me texts that had me so upset that my nose started bleeding. My y'all, my mama was going back. My my mom is the one who te who put everybody in the fucking group message, told them to pay the fucking rent, started going off on everybody, and now all of a sudden your sister had you so upset and your nose bleeding like I'm just fucking getting mad talking about it because she does this shit all the time and it's just so fucking irritating to me that you always have an excuse for your actions. You 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 provoke someone and then get mad whenever they react. Like what the fuck do you expect? You're talking about a whole grown woman child. Like you what do you expect? As days pass, me and my mom began to gradually start talking back on the phone with each other. She told me that her and somebody a particular somebody um is back talking and you know everything is you know back all good like it used to be and i'm pretty sure y'all think y'all know what i'm about to say but y'all probably don't know really really know what y'all think i'm about to say this lady rekindles her love or whatever the fuck you want to call it with mouth oh my God. okay so pretty much no. long story short i know yep close oh drop your pick up your mouth i, I know so I was like that too. I was like, who, why? And so she was just basically like, yeah, girl, you know, we were talking and I really needed his help. And, you know, he, um, cause you know, I don't have nowhere to stay. Cause yeah, my mama was literally, she had nowhere to stay. She was just sleeping with, I mean, going to random places and sleeping by random spots and like going, getting hotel rooms and shit and paying with credit cards that she didn't even have money for. Like she would do like, like, and I hate to say this, like, crackhead ass shit, dog. He somehow swindled, you know, Mouth and his stupid ass. You know, mind y'all, Mouth had a whole bitch at the motherfucking house. Like, he had a whole bitch. Because at the time, Mouth was living with his mama at the time. He had been living with her for a long, long time. Like, ever since his, his dad passed, he had been living with her. And so, it was Mouth, old, grown ass, about 50-something years old, almost 60, I think and his mistress and his elderly mother. It was really concerning because at this point, my mom and Mal haven't been together for 10 years. Like I had never heard of him ever again ever after, you know, she had finally left him. So I'm like, okay, she finally broke free from this cheating ass nigga because like y'all know he was a cheating ass nigga. But for her to just out the blue say, hey, me and Miles, we back together, you know, we working on our marriage. They weren't legally separated or legally divorced. Like they were just not fucking together or whatever. So. 
technically they were still fucking married. My mom told me how he had got her a hotel room and stayed a couple nights at the hotel with her. Mind you, while he's at the hotel with my mama, while his mistress is at his mama house taking care of his mama, because his mama is elderly. Like, she can't do shit for herself. Okay, she's like, she's at this point, she's like over 85 years old. She can't do shit for herself. So she needs a full-time caregiver. And we gonna call her Gorilla because we, the reason why we gonna call her Gorilla is because my mama called her Gorilla a long time ago. And I really thought it was funny at the time. Either she has to be really insecure because, I didn't say his name, because Mouth was not a good looking man. I told y'all, Mouth lives up to his name. The reason why his name is Mouth because he has some really, really funky ass breath, bitch. My mama would like go pick him up from work or whatever. And I think I already said this, but I'm saying it again, bitch. I don't give a fuck. So like, my mama would pick him up from work and he'll come and get in the car and all you fucking smell is funk. And like, bro, like I swear to God, I kid you not, like the entire car would be so fucking Mm. like words can't explain it and so the reason why i say that she gotta be insecure or maybe it's not that she's insecure maybe it's just like i don't know they both look like they belong together so whatever but i'm just saying like mouth wasn't a denzel he wasn't a idris he wasn't a, a luther like <laughs> I said I looked them. But, like, he wasn't none of the above. Like, not even close. So, the fact that this girl, was, this lady was really allowing Mouth to fuck over her just like he was fucking over my mom whenever they were together earlier on in the beginning stages, you know, because at this time it's like 18 years later. But, like, early on, like, he didn't change. My mom really thought that he changed because she would, like, make certain suggestions. But, no, sis, like, he did not change because he's sitting in the bed with you. Why he got the main bitch. Well, would she be considered the main bitch since my mama married to him? I don't know. But whoever, one of the bitches at the house taking care of his mama. So it's like that right there should have like been a red flag. Like, okay, I really shouldn't be fucking with him because clearly he ain't no different. A few days later passed by, my mama calls me, y'all. And she tells me that she didn't fucking kick the mistress out. I said, how you kick the mistress out, mama? So basically, Mouth was like, hey, hey, I'm about to work stuff out with my wife. Mind you, I grew up in this house, okay? Because this, this was like a, a, a childhood house because my mom had married Mouth whenever I was three. So I grew up in the house where his, you know, where the, the lady was taking care of Mouth's mom, which is the mother-in-law. And we're going to have to give her a name, too. We're just going to call her Granny, okay? No, because then y'all might think I'm talking about my actual Granny. But I don't call her Granny, though. But y'all don't know what I call her, so. Miss Snow. Miss Snow. And the reason why we doing this is because she, whenever I first met her, she had some nice, pretty, dark black hair. And then she got older and her her hair just turned really, really nice and white. Like, it wasn't gray, bitch. It was white. And it was really, 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 like, like cute, you know? So we're going to call her Miss, what? Miss Snow. All right. So, while Gorilla <laughs> was taking care of Miss Snow, Mouth and my mama was just living it up in a fucking hotel room. And so they decided to come, well, I don't know who decided, bitch, but somebody decided to kick the Gorilla out. Oh, shit. They went to the house and told the Gorilla she had to leave. And I don't know how exactly this went. I don't know, I'm pretty sure words were exchanged, but, all I know is my mama told the girl to leave and the girl ended up leaving like one of her childhood jackets or whatever and my mama like purposely kept it from him. Well not a childhood jacket. I think it was a jacket that her son um bought her. It was like a really it was a really, really nice um leather Saints jacket and like Saints the football team because you know New Orleans Saints, yeah. So um yeah, and so I learned this learned this down the line, but I'm just now telling y'all that because at that time that's when she stole the jacket and I thought that was really, really fucking not so like my mama like they were so out of her character and so um yeah i was like why would you just take her jacket and so the, the lady was really really the gorilla was really, really hurt about that jacket because later down the line i have to like talk the gorilla about some other stuff and like she was really really hurt about that jacket so i began to work at the call center um my very very first call center job i, I began to work and at this time this was february 2014 um, the training was strictly Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, I believe. Um, but it was like a really, really strict training. Like you couldn't miss no days or anything like that. And I didn't have a babysitter. The person I was with at the time, um, 
our schedules didn't mesh together because you know I had a I had a daughter she wasn't in daycare or anything like that so I have to make it work somehow so my mom called me and was like hey you know um my office is getting ready to um help me run a u-haul so that we can go up there to Houston and get get you know get the rest of my things from the apartment so um you know if you want they to come down with me you know until you're done your training because like I said it was like six weeks or something if I four to six weeks something like that um and then whenever whenever you're done you can get her back because as long as my training was over with I wouldn't have needed any babysitters because of the, the schedule like the schedule after training changed so that's why you know my mama suggested that so at the time i thought it was a really really fucking good idea so i'm like okay cool why not you know, i'm just thinking it's just her mouth because i'm I, you know i wasn't told of any other people that would have been coming with them so um the plan was to meet my mom at the old apartment where you know the old apartment that she up and left at yeah the plan at the time my grandma by the way had was already moved out my grandma ended up having to find a new place and she actually did find a place within a week so that was good she was out before my mama had came for her stuff which is good too because i didn't want the foolish things to go down so um i'm already at the apartment and the door opens and i hear my mom's voice and then i hear um then i hear i keep fucking about to say his name and then i hear mouse voice and so I'm like, okay, cool, you know, it's them or whatever. But bitch, then I started hearing another voice. And then I started hearing another motherfucking voice. And then I started to think, bitch, that voice sounds familiar, okay? That that fourth voice, I'm not really, don't really know. But the third voice, bitch, sounds familiar. And you never guess who the fuck it was and why. Like, the fuck? Why, bitch? It was rough rider my mama the husband the best friend girlfriend they say they ain't girlfriend but whatever and then mouse stepdaughter that i didn't even know he had been knowing this nigga for i don't know how long and he just been starting to have kids out of the like this nigga been have like he he got kids you know what i'm saying like he, kids you just be finding randomly out about and shit so yeah so that was my first time meeting her or whatever so i'm like dude you gotta be fucking serious like you gotta you gotta be kidding me you can't be serious girl i have to play i have to be so damn fake because i at this point i was fucking cringing because this is my very first time seeing rough rider since she had left the house after i had got pregnant and all the other extra shit or whatever it's my first time seeing her in years and so I, I mean i'm grown at this point i don't give a fuck bitch like we can fight now i don't give a fuck but it still was like not a settling thing to me like it still wasn't something that just like made me feel like okay cool bitch like you know this is cool what's up hey how y'all doing nah like i don't want to talk to you like don't speak to me don't say shit and of course you know a, a bitch always got to be friendly and a bitch said something to me so of course the bitch had to say hey back but the simple fact that mom like had both of them in the same fucking rooms like what like that is and the reason why and okay i know it probably don't mean nothing to y'all and really it didn't mean anything at the time but now it means a lot because i know a lot of other stuff but we ain't gonna discuss that right now after that crazy ordeal they made it back down there to Louisiana maybe like two weeks or so I noticed my mom's behavior start, behavior started changing it's like it started changing again but it started like reversing a little bit it's like she started to go back into that de depressive ass mode it's like our, we will talk on the phone every night and you know I'll talk to my daughter tell her goodbye and I would ever talk to her boom but like our conversations got really really short I could tell something was wrong and so um I didn't know really what it was but my, my mom eventually opened up a little bit and was like you know, I'm over here wiping his mama ass. Talking about Miss White, you know, the mother-in-law. I said Miss White. I call her Miss Snow. My bad. Forgive me, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She was like, I'm over here wiping Miss Snow's ass and bathing her. But she pissing in cups and shitting on the floor now. And people walking in that shit and picking up cups that got pissed in it. And I'm, quite frankly, I'm just fed up with it. I'm, I'm taking her to her doctor's appointments and, you know, doing this and that. And, you know, this is basically what my mama was telling me. And so, um, I was like, damn, that's a lot. It, it was, like, tearing her apart. One time, my mom called me so upset because cause she heard Miss Snow talking on the phone about her. And I don't know exactly what was said. I don't really know if it was true or not. But I kind of sort of believe it because y'all know how elderly women get whenever they get older. They get really, really, really messy and really, really, like, snobbish and, like, you know, 
it's all about them like y'all know how it is and so and it's not that they don't they don't mean any harm it's like you know whenever they get of age it just become an, become a different way you know and so that was the kind of elderly woman miss white what i keep saying miss white that was the kind of elderly woman miss snow was and so it was starting to like fuck with, with my mama one day i don't know how long I found this out, but she basically found out that Mouth was still communicating with Gorilla, which of course isn't a surprise. Like you don't just up and have a bitch leave somewhere that they've been for years, you know, for 10 years. Basically. Well, they wasn't together for 10 years, but they've been together for a long ass time. You don't just leave, do that whether y'all was married or not. Like you don't just do that and expect him to cut her off completely. So my mama thought he changed, bitch, he ain't fucking changed, not a goddamn thing. They got into it or whatever, and she ended up fucking leaving. She left for a little while. She went to Rough Rider's house, and Rough Rider, she lived on the outskirts of New Orleans. She lived in Donaldsonville, Louisiana at this time. I think she still lived there. I don't know. But, um, she lived in here, and it was a really, really small town, so if you watch my video and you live in there, bitch, you might know her. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, by this time, my daughter has already gotten back to me or whatever I, I forgot to mention that but it wasn't that significant for me to tell y'all so that's why i forgot but by the time my daughter is already back with me so uh before my mom left the house where mouth was my daughter had uh came back home so my daughter's home or whatever I mean, everything's going good with me at this point um but my mom was living with rough rider at this time Rough Rider wasn't treating her right, basically. She wasn't treating her like my mama treated her whenever she was living with her for 10 years. Like, obviously, like, I could have told you that, like, she was straight up using you for all those years that you had her living with you. Whenever the shoe's on the other foot, like, she can't treat you how you was treating her. But you chose her over me, though. Okay. But, yeah, she wasn't really happy. And I didn't really know the extension of why she wasn't really happy. Because, like, my mom didn't really mention it until later down the line. So, that's I'm only telling y'all this because that's what I found out later down the line. But I didn't know really what was going on at this time. I didn't know how. I just thought everything was okay between her and her friend. And she was just, you know, being real cool and letting her stay with her because... I mean, they, they friends, right? And so this is when the story gets interesting. My mom was still dealing with mouth while she was living with Rough Rider. And so um, this one particular time she, this one particular time, I guess she found out that um, Gorilla moved, the, moved back in. Like y'all, he waste no time on love and Gorilla moved right the fuck back in. Like that's how y'all know it's like he been a cheating ass nigga. Like, and he ain't wait, y'all, like, none of that shit. So, my mom, she wasn't feeling that. She was madly in love with him, y'all, like, madly in love with him. So, like, when love makes you do crazy things. That's really, like, one of the lessons in this story time. That's one of the lessons. Love make you do crazy things. So, love and mom go to the house. <laughs> um, love made my mom go there. At this time, mouth was not there, um... I think he was at work or something and so my mom just passed by their house she saw um gorilla's car so my mom goes there and this happens on wednesday april 29th 2015 at approximately 1201 hours i was dispatched to in morero louisiana this incident is in reference to an unauthorized entry and a simple battery upon arrival i met with a reporting person Miss Snow, the victim, who has stated that her daughter-in-law, my mom, the suspect, entered her house without her permission and attacked her. Miss Snow advised that my mom entered the side door of her house, walked into her bedroom, then punched her several times and covered her face with a blanket. Miss Snow gave a written voluntary statement stating that she wishes to pursue charges against my mom. Um, Ms. Snow mentioned that my mom stopped living at the location the Friday before Easter this year and still have property inside. She also stated that she left her on her own terms and that it was understood that she wasn't allowed back at the location unless she was just coming to get her property. I spoke with Gorilla, the witness, who stated that she observed the incident and that my mom was not invited into the residence. While Ms. Gorilla advised that she lives at the location with Mr. Mouth and um, Ms. White, <laughs> um, in quotation marks, husband. <laughs> Y'all see that? I, I, I have to blur my mom's name, but they said my mom's name husband in quotation marks they're shady as fuck in this police report she then explained that my mom appeared to be mentally unstable and mentioned that she was going to admit herself into a hospital i observed um 
Miss Snow to be in good physical condition with no obvious physical injuries. West Jeff EMS unit arrived at the location. Miss White, Miss Snow, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna fucking call her Miss White. Fuck that shit. We're gonna call her Miss White because I can't, I'm not about to keep fucking this shit up. I can't do it. Um, fuck it. <laughs> Miss White and Miss um, Gorilla were advised to contact the police if my mom returned to lo the location. After the situation, she, my mom would call her, and I, I mean like Miss White, my mom would call their house weird hours of the morning and like screaming the fucking phone and say, I'm, like, I'm gonna kill you and like weird ass, creepy ass, like literally harassing ass shit she would do. And so they would have to call the cops and report it. And so um, eventually um, it caught up to her. Okay, now, when it caught up to her, the way it caught up to her, I, I shall say rather, is so fucking disturbing. The way this next situation of my mom being involved with Miss White and Gorilla, she went back to the house again. After this situation, my mom went back to the house again. What she did whenever she went back to this house is so fucking disturbing, like so disturbing to the point where I'm gonna have to make a whole nother story time about that <laughs> because this is it. Like, I feel like I've been talking for a long ass time. Like, all these fucking screenshots and emails and shit that I've been reading, bitch. Like, a bitch is tired. But no, for real, the shit is really disturbing, low key. Like, well, not low key, bitch. High all the way up. Like, it's so disturbing what this next story time is gonna be about. Like, I'll probably just fucking put it in the, the title. I kinda already know what it is. I ain't even much gonna tease y'all. It's too much for me to talk about in this story time because I feel like the story time is long enough. So, um, I hope this, I hope y'all enjoying this stuff. I hope y'all are appreciating the time that I'm taking out to actually read stuff from word for word because I hate fucking reading, like, things that are, like, fucking this fucking small and I'm, my eyesight is, like, zero to none. So, um... I hope y'all fucking appreciate that shit because that shit was hard as fuck to react. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you so much because you are not going to believe what's going to be happening these next few story times. Like, y'all not I keep saying, I feel like I'm starting to say this in every single story time, but it's simply literally because the shit starts to get worse and worse. You think things are worse right now with mama going and allegedly attacking the lady? And by the way, um... I'm gonna have her side of the story. I'll talk about her side of the story of what actually happened in there, what she claimed actually happened in my next story time. But y'all, like, she was convicted of it, by the way. But y'all, like, it it just get worse from here. So, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so that you won't miss the next video. Um, I love y'all so much for watching. Let me know in the comment sections below what are y'all thoughts so far? What do y'all think this disturbing news is gonna be like? It's, it's disturbing. It's disgusting. You're like, like literally disgusting. Read between the lines. It's disgusting what she does next. So, um, I love y'all so much for watching me. Thank you so much for being the best part of my experience doing this fucking YouTube shit. If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be motherfucking over here talking about this bullshit. So, thank y'all so much for watching. And I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Thanks.